This is Linnell Crosby, and he'll tell you all about it. Hang on just one second. Whoops. Go, Linnell. Oh, shoot. There you go. Come on. Oh! And I can see that she's bad. And I used to go by and tell this. She lived over on, on Fremont. On, I don't know whether the Lincoln going or was going to her house or going to that. And I used to go by and she'd be in the yard. I'd do that. And she, but I, and I had a lot now, of her. Now, was that the house on San Joaquin Street or was that the house on Willow? Huh? Was that the house on San Joaquin Street or on Willow? The Willow. Okay. It must be the one over behind that over okay. there. Yeah, yeah, back over there. Because I used to go by that. And um, she was a quite, I remember, but it really hit me when, when she passed. She was at a breakfast at, I think it was Delta somewhere one morning, when she had a heart attack. You, 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 you read that, don't mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all I'm saying, that got me. But I had a, I enjoyed working with her. And she was she was a, quite a lady, and she uh, she she in other words she cooperated, and you couldn't do nothing else but cooperate with. And I like to have a lot of fun anyway. And so she one time she came over there, and uh, the ladies was called on. I was on the fruit cocktail line. I was driving a lift for the fruit cocktail line, and so I would take a, I would take a. I would take a take a care of the box for him, set it down with the women. So when I went in to take over in the evening, they had the women cooking and and, and, and the women have to walk over there and get up. And I said, uh, and Lee said, "Okay, Lionel, said, so you got the, the cocktail line and the the the, 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 the they call it pillars. They were called the women pillars. They the free stone, free stone and pillars thing." Oh, and I said, hey, Lee, I said, can I set up like I want to? He said, you going to make it worse or better? I said, what are you kidding? You ain't done it. And he said, okay. So instead of going in and setting it straight, I set it in there with a lady would that stand between the two, and all they do is just reach and reach and just do this. And all, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And right now,
would have liked but, that. Uh, but the way I, <coughs> I really enjoyed it. The way I become a, she asked me one time, after Lee and them all, when they see me operate the crane, they, she said, call him. You know, and Lee was standing out there at the time when the man was hurt. She said, call him. You a black man, I said. Yeah, I said, I'm different from you, ain't I? And we had a lot of fun in this day there. She said, oh, what where did you learn how to cut off the crane? I said, uh -huh. I said, go way back to Tallulah, Louisiana. You know, Delhi, Louisiana. What? I said, yeah. I said, uh, this plantation owner named Martin. Martin had a plantation in it. His property come right up across the road. Our, the road went right through our, to, to the front of our house. So they had a crane set out on there to clean out the ditches. And they go to town on the weekend and go home when we was kids. We we go over there and get on the crane and play with it. That's where I learned that our first crane. So and I was good at it too. And then when I went to the Navy, one time I went to the Navy and then this and then uh, this was uh, the, uh, before I went to work at Tillage, but I went to the Navy and like they said um, they said uh, we were spitting out a ship. For an open dry dock, fitting it out, the guy had a man, he'd drawn it up, pull up, and they'd load the trucks on the trucks, come up, unload them. So I, I come out after lunch and I went out there. I said, Why don't y'all use that crane? And the first lieutenant said, <coughs> When I went to work, I got to work about 30 minutes, I went in the phone rang. He said, Long L? Get in the truck, go down the first day, first and first nail, and see Phyllis Fowler, pull up that crane out there. He said, don't say nothing to me. He said, do what I told you. So I went on down there, and <coughs> when I put in for it, I come over there with a friend of mine, was sitting over there, she's at the desk, and I was over there, me, and I was watching Phyllis. And she said, Mr. Newton, please. And she said, he did it. And that's where I've become a crane operator. And, and, and they come in hand, and a lot of times it's cameras like that. But. Uh, tell me, what did it feel like to you coming from the, the serious South? And I'm, assur I'm assuming there was racism when you were a boy. Yes? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's, uh, How did it feel coming here and being accepted and having people Well, I'll like tell you what. At that time, when we come, it was, uh, to see that uh, <coughs> World War II changed a whole lot. A whole lot. World War II changed a whole lot. See, at one time, World War II there was discrimination in barracks, bar barracks. When Truman become president, Truman told, uh, <coughs> told Congress and the Senate and all everybody, and he said, we're going to do it with the military segregation. He said, if they can fight together, die together, they all can sleep together and eat together. And some of them want to boot old Truman's butt, but they didn't get it. Because Truman was, Truman was, he, he, he's a joker. They'd be looking for Truman sometimes, he'd be halfway to, to, to Powell. And they had, the security had to catch up with him. But, uh, but I, I found out that it was, there was a whole lot of I never would have got, got a chance with a lot of things if it, it hadn't been this old change. But were, then, were you angry? I mean, there's so much anger now about, no, no. you know, oh, I'm not treated fair, this is not right, or was it just the way it, did, did you feel an anger about it, or, or no, well, you know, because you I, seem like such a happy guy. Well, uh, you see, you had to go and, see, when I was in the Navy, uh -huh. when I was in the Navy, it, it still existed, but it's such a small scale. 
Now, the guy was from Mississippi, a white guy. We called him Murray. And we were on deck, and we were working on a winch. We, 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 had, 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 we had a block and tackle, and a ball and spike. And um, me and Murray were down there one time, and the first lieutenant walked around with a deck of the ship. And so uh, Murray said, uh, Cut, dog, call him shit. Put it. Because he said, this thing is just hard as a nigga head. And uh, I said, you're, you're right. I said, but we were crawling and I just kept on. And when we got through, the first lieutenant called and said, call him. Did you hear him over there? He said, yes. I said, yes, sir. I heard him. He said, what? How you hear him? I said, look, uh, lieutenant. I said, I'm from the South. I know, sir, I know Southern ways. I know what happened. The guy was trained just like I was trained. I said, so I'm here and don't hear it. Be, you, you, you can sleep better. Another night, we were in there, and I was a uh, quartermaster. We was chaining ships at night. We had them on a big board in, in the Navy. So I was going to push carrying the ladder. I was going to on the ladder, and the guy would read them off, and I'd chain if he got pushed down and put it over there. The USS San Jose in the Philippines, oh, we put it up there. To get to the USS or so. And so they're talking about Jesse James. The outlaw Jesse James. The, the, the outlaw Jesse James. Okay. And we was there, that was, we was on night shift that night. That, 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 that was in Hawaii. And, uh, and then and, and, and Richardson said, said, hey, she, yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. She said, she, she said I know a nigga that in and, and, and Texas said he knows Jesse James. And then just sort of, and, and, and uh, I heard him, and so Chief, he said, okay, let's, 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 let's take a break, let's take a break. So we got through, and, and Richardson, then we sent out and get some, some snacks at night. 12, 11 or 12 o'clock. So I went out on the upper deck, I was out there on the pool and on the stand there on the balcony. He come out there and he said, Call him. Did you hear him? I said, what? He said, Did you? I said, Yeah, I heard him. He said, What? I said, You sure? I heard him. He said, Call him. What? I said, Look, the chief, I said, you have to learn how we are in a we are in a, 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 we are fighting a war. I said we ain't got no business fighting against it. He said I was born in the South. I know all those South ways and act. I said just I let it, let it go through my head like a hurricane. That's all I don't like. He said well I'm gonna tell you something. So you got something done that ain't too many of them got. I said you're right. So I seen some of them some hate couple fight because that word was used. But I enjoyed everything. And then 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 that. And I like machinery. I, li I love working with machinery. That's the way it was. And uh, we used to, uh, we used to teach. I'm just going to make sure you're still in the shot. Keep talking. Yeah, yeah. I hope you've a long day. I do. <coughs> Keep going. Mm -hmm. I'm just making sure. Something to drink. Mm -hmm. The mistress of Florindel Delgaizo and went to Italy and he gave her the furs and made her rich because she was a very poor Brooklyn Jew. Very poor. And she, and she didn't want that anymore. She said, heck no. She was smart. She took off with this rich Italian. He was in the tomato business. He showed her how in Italy. I guess he showed her more than just how. Um, and got her started here. Yeah, it's a history. And then he died. So he died in 1937, but but she had already been set up and knew how to work it. So she had to beg for loans because to get money then, she was Jewish and she was a woman. And they didn't want to give a Jewish woman in Stockton any money. So she had she, she begged and she crawled and, and she didn't get paid. She paid her employees first, got and, and they kept that business going. So, they, they, they but she was Tilly on. Weisberg, and she married Mr. Lewis in 1948. Uh, because he was from New York, wasn't he? They were both from New York. Yeah. Uh, and he was a mobster. He 
was connected, not high level with the mob. He was with um, the American Federation of Labor, so he mm -hmm. was a he was a union man, mm -hmm. but he was a slightly mobster guy, and she still told him what to do. So she was still in charge, but he had connections that in she. In other words, she, she faced the public and she was back behind feeding it out to the tool. Yes. <laughs> so that's the story with that. So Flo Till comes from her first lover, Florida yeah, Guys. Yeah. I mean, like, so much about him, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't find out, I didn't try to find out. Uh, hey, I've been doing this for a yeah, long I time. Know you, I right. know you and her, her parents were, <coughs> um, her mother died when she was little from tuberculosis. And um, dad was a, a Hasidic Jew. Was <laughs> and, and a lot of my husband got mad at the wife because the wife went along with it. But I, I, I don't blame him. What if I go out to some drum and I'm going to my wife and worked all the week for a check. And I go out there and get it Friday evening and cash it. And, and she come on Saturday morning and I'll be coming from Reno and I lost all of it. Used to happen all the time. I... Yeah, it was, but Tilly Lewis cut it off. <laughs> I call some of the names too. Yeah. I've, I've heard she could. Mm. So what is, <coughs> do you have a, a terrible day at Tilly Lewis? Do you remember something terrible that you were very upset? So what? Do you remember a day when you came home very upset? Was there something really bad? What's, is there something you remember that was not a good thing? No. No, not, not good. It's just, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just like regular Everybody ain't going to enjoy it in a, in a public figure. Somebody ain't going to like it if you're doing it right. Now, the one thing she did, she didn't cook too much in my eyes, but especially when it comes to the, the work. She didn't cook. Now, and, uh, I, I, I don't tell nobody this, but behind the scene I found it out. <coughs> Not be worried about that camera on Waterloo Road, but she did it to her, she did it to help a friend. Now say that again. Flotel Camry. Uh huh. Then they didn't need Waterloo Wilson's camera, but some Waterloo Camry Wilson fell into some clutch hole. Gotcha. Till the loose stepped in and bought him out. Bought him. Well, she took advantage of. She, 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 yeah. she, she, she did, and 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 I, and I said it was to help the community. I, I call a real community to help the community. And uh, I heard a couple of her speeches at certain <coughs> organizations. I heard a couple of her speeches, and uh, it was a she was a community woman. Uh, Do you remember what she said in her speeches? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what she said in her speeches? What was she talking about? <laughs> she said, I believe husband and wife is husband and wife. We work together and not divided. If we were going to divide it, we should have stayed out of the same house in the same bedroom. She said she, that in a speech in public? Sure, she said. She said one time down in the city garden told it. Well, I'm going to tell you, at that time, <coughs> the camera was working as a, 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 was, a, was one of the upkeeps of this, this place. So was she, do you think she was talking about um, the, the company being like a family, like a husband and wife, not? No, she just talking about the, 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 in, 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 in dealing with employees. And then the completely people are in general. Okay, she, she wasn't talking about herself she, she as wasn't, a wife. She wasn't. She was. She wasn't. She wasn't talking about herself. Or I don't okay. know whether she was or not, but she was just telling <coughs> the listeners. Okay. Let's let's live together and get along together. Let's work together. Like family. And uh, and company. Treat your labor, your your workers like family. Got it. Okay. They're working for you. You're paying them to work for you. And uh, I'm paying you to work.
word for me, do your job. Okay? Yes. And uh, and uh, and uh, men don't get mad at me because your wife worked and I don't give you a check. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, she had to get the, she had to get the police to, <laughs> to take out of one meeting. <laughs> she had to get the police. <laughs> the men were mad at her. So oh. she said what she said about it. Too. About the check. generation that that would just never happen so <laughs> and that's why I'm asking you these questions because things would happen to you as um, a person of your generation and as a black man that I couldn't possibly understand so but what it sounded like she was the type of person that listened at their problems she talked to her employees and they hear, hear about their problems and knew what was going on you know one thing, a lot of people don't understand it. Sure, but, and uh, uh, like I told them one time out at the in my job on the base, which is a disposal. We had we had short surplus, we load trucks with the property. <coughs> Going to Chicago, all over the country, foreign country, Canada, everywhere. And uh, they went to load this material on for Chicago. And they went out there, the, the guy pulled up, up there and he raised it up. Bees come swarming out. He jumped off and run. So, uh, and everybody running and the guy went up there and everybody was backing up and the lieutenant was, uh, was, uh, was, was, was couldn't uh, and I didn't, when I was coming up in school, I was studying to be an M bomb. <coughs> From then on. When you were a child? When I was a child, when I was a child, I worked for the Harris Film, and I was 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And what jobs did you do then? Help M bomb. Which is what? Tell me. What? The, the, the embalming work, the incision, bleeding, and fluid, and, and, and dressing. Wasn't that creepy? Huh? Was, was, was it, was it, did it scare you, dead people? No, you know what I know, you know what I, no. I, <laughs> the joke was, I was laying up in the night waiting to, to, to uh, you know, we had eight bodies in there. And I don't know where the cat come from, he's got in the curtain. He had the curtain just going, and I couldn't see the cat. And so I jumped in my chair. So I jumped in, and I run to the door, and I said, by God, I said, it's supposed to be, whoever you are, you're supposed to be dead. I said, if you ain't dead, you're going to get out. And I got me a broom and went back in. I caught that cat. I threw that cat off the street, up in the tree. And I sat hung up in that tree for about six months. That killed that cat. Now, was the funeral home? No, I didn't go to it. Yeah. I didn't want to see it in the cat. They keep them, Jewish people keep them close. But. I, 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 for a long time, I used to go to, I did some work over at the, the Davenport Hospital and some other place I was doing some kind of work. Anyway. And I'd pass her house, and I'd look over. And uh, before she passed, I'd pass, and she'd be standing out there. She, she's always doing something. She, you know, she didn't have a she didn't have a housekeeper. She did her own work. I, I think it, she did her own work. Cause every time I'm seeing, she's out there in the yard doing something. And I said, she must she must have like a housekeeper. No, she, she, if she was out there, she was she was enjoying herself. Yeah, she, that's what, whatever it was. Um, in fact, what she did is, if work. If she, she, I would say she was number one and a half. She, 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 she showed it. 
and then and she was a businesswoman because number number one, <coughs> she stood behind her business and things she didn't observe, didn't know herself. She knew somebody smart enough in her life to say, "Come." and help me out, and you won't regret it. If I, if I had to do, do it all over again, I'd do it all over again. But she tickled me. <laughs> when I was Lee Weaver, tickled me about me being off of Rachel Crane. <laughs> yeah, she offered me. She, yeah, she, 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 I, I said, leave it out there. She just happened to be over there that morning. It was about 9 o'clock. And uh, this guy, he got, he got hurt. It was Saturday. And he said, and the, the people that was working the crane, they was gone. They didn't come. They left Friday. And, they, they were, and, uh, and uh, this guy, I don't know what happened to him, but they was up in the rack and up in the, making tomato paste. Tomato paste, there, yeah. And uh, he got hurt. They was trying to get him down. And then they always had like the rig and pull. So I told him, you're the crane. And they did, and, and, and uh, Lee Turner always said, they'd always call me and say, okay, smarty, you do it. I said, okay, back off. And I remember him. shut this off and show you some pictures. Oh. Oh, Lord. Let's see if I can have you re remember a few more things. <laughs>